You wrote about this uh, in your uh, book. You're talking about the first Clash of the Champions, I think you were on. Yeah. As much as uh, I wish it weren't true, my first tent in WCW spanning late November 89 through mid-June 90 will best be remembered for my February 10th match at Clash of the Champions. Unfortunately, I hated the match and considered it one of the biggest letdowns of my career. For years, however, it was the most frequently thing talked about of my career, so I'll at least try to touch on it. Uh, do you want to just catch us up to... Yeah, um, yeah. this is where I disagreed with WCW because I think it, was, uh, it wasn't for Cinco de Mayo, that's in May, but it was Corpus Christi, uh, a strong uh, Hispanic, market. Hispanic market, and they decided to bring in Mil Mascaras. Uh, and Corny's the one who breaks that news to you. Corny breaks the news, working. hey, and he thinks it's going to be great. Yes. And I'm like, ooh, man. And I know Mascaras is a certifiable legend, bigger star globally than I, I ever was. But I'd also seen him work in world class, and I felt like he, was, he wasn't a giver. You know, that he was going to get in his stuff. At that, at that point, he was older. That's all he really wanted to do. Uh, and I did not know that how to have a good match with him. Like, Al Perez couldn't have a good match. Now it was a heck of a hand. Um, so it was. I Al was, Perez is, uh, for people who don't know, he's Seth Rollins' father, illegitimately. No, just no, yeah, but he looks like him, right? Looks identical. Yeah. yeah. But Al was super smooth. He had a great body. Like, he was a real great technician. He wouldn't put people over, though. Right. And that was really, that's the silliness of not, but you're costing yourself a job because you don't want to hurt your job. So you're going to not hurt your job by losing your job yes. because you won't put over the champion. Yes. Just dumb. Dumb to me. And especially, and I was there when guys would walk out of dressing rooms because they did two weeks in Japan and they wouldn't want to lose because uh, photography, I, I lost all the time and I did uh, pretty well. But anyway, I, I knew that it was tough to have a good match, and I like to have good matches. And my hopes were up because Mill, I think he missed his flight on purpose. If you want to catch a later flight, uh, I was set to do a singles match with Rick Fargo, who would have gladly put me over. So the idea is just to catch everybody up. You're supposed to be working Mill Mascaris. You, you, you think, or Cornette thinks, when he breaks the news to you, you'd be thrilled. Right. But instead, when you don't get or he doesn't get some sort of enthusiastic response. He asks, what's wrong with that? And you just cut straight to it. And you say, Masker sucks, and the match is going to suck. <laughs> and then you ask, you know, as you explain, in my dealings, I found him to be selfish, redundant, and lousy. Those are your words in the book. Yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah. Jimmy, or you ask him, Jimmy, why is he coming in? And Cornette lets you know, ah, oh, it's just a couple shows in the Texas border towns. So it does feel like, as much as he's helped you out, he occasionally has given you some bad news, and this maybe he was all he he was sometimes given he was sometimes the bearer of bad news. Yeah. So I like in you know bringing Mill for uh, that's great to try to increase uh, the crowd a little bit, but in the end, you're taking a guy who you're trying to push, having to lose to someone who's not going to be on again, somewhat akin to, to what I thought saw as a short sightedness of making the Omni in Atlanta the priority when Bill Watts came in to yes. turn the Omni into the Madison Square Garden of the South. And so you'd have guys cutting promos about the Omni on live national television, which to me made it look like a regional promotion. Yeah. Uh, but that was the, the on their list. The Omni was more important than those other aspects. And I guess in this case, building up that house in Corpus Christi was more important than the television product. Uh, so I, I, I realized that was quite a For, challenge. Forget all the company okay. stuff. From your perspective, your career is going pretty well here. Yeah. And now this is going to be my most watched match ever, and I'm going to be wrestling a guy who I know is going to make sure I look less than. Right. He's going to make sure he he did his hip tosses and he died. he was a great he was a great worker. He still when in his day. Let, you know, got over everywhere he went, whether or not, whether, and he got over in places that it was not based on the Hispanic market. You know, he had a unique look, great body, uh, great looking mask, uh, Mil Mascaras, great name. Uh, but he was older and he didn't care about having good matches. And at that time, that was my priority. I wanted to have good matches and I didn't think I could have one with Mill. He probably wasn't the type of guy who was going to come over and say, what would you like to do tonight? No, yeah, not at all. Matter of fact, he only got there about 20 minutes before we went on. 
So uh, when he's late to the building, they start to make backup plans, and yeah. that's when you think maybe you're going to be wrestling Fargo, right? Mm-hmm. Which would mean you're getting a win on Clash of the Champions. Right, right. Drop that big elbow. Rare win because I was just coming off, you know, about 10 weeks. Uh, there was that interruption. Well, I actually didn't miss any TV time when I got uh, a big car accident. Uh, about 100 stitcheroonies in the, in the Foley body. body. Front teeth were knocked out, but did not miss any time. I'm proud of that. Didn't miss any matches. Uh, but a, a win on TV would have been big, especially on Clash of the Champions.